I'm Ronnie from Ronnie's Garage in Southern California. What we're going to do today on that charging system is I got out of the shop manual. So I printed out the pages so that we can just, you know, go through the factory step-by-step -step diagnosis thing. So what we got here, there we go. Right down here, this, this bolt right here is a cinch bolt. Depending on who tighten it last, sometimes on the on the Silver Cloud ones and twos they have just a screw slot. This has got a hex head. I'm going to get a wrench or a socket to do that. Um, you want to loosen that because that distributor rotates in there. You can. That's how you set the timing. It's a quarter BS, which I think is a, a one eight. Whitworth, but I use a 12 millimeters real loose. I use that and I'll use a long extension and a swivel socket. So you don't have to take the bolt out, you just want it to loosen. So now, Stay here a moment. The distributor should start to rotate like that, and you should be able to twist and lift it out of there. If you can't, then what you've got to do is you've got that clamping base is a little off center, so it's holding the distributor. So I'm going to get this, and if you just loosen that clamping plate right there a little bit, usually I'm gonna undo this, loosen the other side, so you can't see, and it should uh, allow that plate to slide around a little bit. See how much easier that turns? There we go. So now it should just twist in like that. All right, there we go, a distributor. Okay, don't clamp that too tight because this metal shaft goes through the center of that aluminum housing and you can, you can ruin it. So here we go. So the spark comes in here. Now, remember I said this has two points also, but this works all eight cylinders on this car. If you look at, this is a cam lobe, right? This is the point, and this is the rubbing block I was talking about that will wear down. As this, the engine's turning, you can see the points open and close, right? Boom, 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 boom. If you look at these clo points closely, I don't know if this is too bad. If you look at them real closely, they're pretty charred looking. Does that work? No. Okay. They're pretty, pretty charred looking in there. Right here. Okay. So these are the points. And what you have is you have this wire goes to the coil. One side of the coil, there's two wires to the one side of the coil is battery or ignition voltage. Okay, this is the grounding side. So what happens is when these points close, they ground to the case, and that's when you're charging the coil. As soon as the points open, and the voltage has to find a way out, it comes out, and it goes through this bar out through plug wires and all that. Sometimes, over time, what happens is it makes a connection between here and here. That's a burned out rotor. So what happens is the car will not spark out. It just shorts out, it goes right to this boundary. And that's, that's a common cause for a non-start, right? So as the engine's turning, you'll see that these this has eight lobes. One, these are the lobes, points. Two, three, not points, but the high spots. 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So why do they need two points? So what, the way they do it to use the two points, extend the life, is they make one open. This will open first. Okay, that opens. And then before this one closes, this one opens, right? So it's still open. We're still not to ground. And then, then it finally closes. That's how they do it. So one starts the fire, one finishes the fire. interesting this is a condenser this is supposed to absorb some of the spark wear here it just kind of soaks up because what happens is when you open a spark you create a voltage spark all right this is the vacuum advance i'm gonna see if i can hook up a vacuum pump and see if that one works okay so plug that hose and you can see it's it's creating a vacuum. It's, it's 12 inches of vacuum. So when we hook it up to here, what should happen? Is that the vacuum on this side of the rubber diaphragm in there, which is attached to this, this spring loaded rod there should pull this way. And it's not, it's not building vacuum. So the rubber's burst. So you don't have any vacuum advance. This unit needs to be replaced. Plus it kind of wiggles around. See, as you can see, that is connected. This vacuum advance is connected to this whole point plate. Uh, simulate. Not to worry, these are still available. You have one on the shelf. Plus parts and items. Okay, so what happens is when this diaphragm is in there, I'm gonna simulate it. It's supposed to, it turns these plates. And you think, okay, what's that gonna do? That's gonna change the opening point for this, the, the points. And remember the opening point is when the spark plug fires. So it's going to do it sooner. Rotation, normal rotations counterclockwise on this. So as it's going there, it's going to open the first point first and fire that 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 spark plug. Actually, these are offset. That's right. So this is going to go. There's, there's an overlap. They both open right now. Um, and let's let's go even further because not only do we have this vacuum advance, which reacts to throttle pressure. I'm gonna take these, this other section here is on a sliding plate. So you can make micro adjustments on this timing on this car. Let me show that. If you look over here, let me turn this so you can see it better. You see right here, there's a little pointer. Uh, there's, there, there's a little index gauge here and you see zero. You see that little zero? Right here. I'm gonna have to get up, and look down. See it now? The zero. Yeah. Okay. The zero, the A, and the R. Zero is dead center timing. Okay. Then the R means retard, so you can retard the timing. A means you can advance the timing, and you can do it real easy on this by just loosening this lock nut. And you'll see that the, the whole plate up top turns now. So as soon as I get it hooked in there. See that? It turns the whole housing. Not just this individual plate. That's the vacuum advance. This, you can make micro adjustments of the timing uh, without loosening the cinch bolt and all that kind of stuff. But most cars have an automatic um, mechanical advance. So as you, um, as the engine speed increases, it increases the timing, it advances it. Because you're gonna get your best idle at a 
close to zero or a retarded point. And then as you're accelerating, you want to fire that that um, spark plug a little earlier because the piston's moving so fast. That's what happens, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lift this plate up and show you what the mechanical advance looks like. So these screws have springs and shoulders. So the, the shoulder screws right into the bottom. And then the spring holds the tension on this plate to keep it from jumping up and down. Okay, so this should just lift right off. So now these are the the weights. And you, if you see this, this right here, it's not part of this shaft. It floats on there, right? But this is this has the the lobes on it to do the firing. And as you go to a higher speed, these spring-loaded weights will move out. See that? And what they do is they turn that and advance it even more. So you've got a mechanical advance. You have your initial timing. So you set that advance, and then you have a vacuum advance on this. So when you hear people talking about vacuum advance and curves and all that kind of stuff, it gets kind of complicated, but the total advance is the combination of where you set it to fire when the car's not running, how far this advances, max, and then also your, your uh, vacuum advance. So what you wanna look for if you're gonna pull this apart like this, is you wanna make sure this, this advanced mechanism isn't frozen. You see it spring loads back, right? It should come back to zero every time. When they get old and worn and they're not lubricated and taken apart, then they wear, um, then sometimes they won't come back all the way. So what'll happen is you'll set the timing and it's not back all the way, right? Because you set these timing on these statically. You don't do it while it's running. And then, you'll drive the car and comes back and then it's idling slower, not running very good because those, those, those weights came back. 